Well, here we are, it's the month of November, and although a lot of you guys may be thinking about hunting this time of the year, the fishing can still be really, really good. As a matter of fact, this late fall time to me is just as good as the pre-spawn. And in today's video, I wanna talk about the top five baits, the ones that I never leave home without. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by my fishing apparel business, Fin Fishing. Right now at Fin Fishing, I am still running a sale on some of my bass hats and my t-shirts. So if you guys are looking for some hats and some shirts, you can get them for 20% off right now. I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description. It is a huge help to keep the Bass Fishing HQ channel going. Now the one lure that I probably fish most often during this month is some sort of shallow to medium depth diving crankbait. Now, two of my absolute favorites, these are the ones that I absolutely have tied up with me all the time, is a DT6, Rapala DT6, in a Berkeley Fritz side. Now, I will also use a DT8 as well. They're basically the same body. One dives a little bit deeper. The DT6 obviously dives to about six foot. The eight dives to about eight foot. Now, when it comes to the Fritz side, there is a number of different sizes and depth zones that the Fritz side will cover. So you really, you can kind of pick the one that is going to be best suited for the conditions that you are fishing. But to me, these two crankbaits are the best cold water crankbaits out there on the market, at least from the ones that I have used. There's a lot of really good ones. There's also some really high-end custom baits that are really good in cold water, but these two baits are readily available and they are very easy to cast. Another great cold water crankbait is actually a Rapala Shad Wrap. Now that particular bait, it's very light and it can be a little bit difficult to cast. A lot of times I'm gonna use a spinning rod for the Shad Wrap, but these two baits right here, man, they are so, so good. Now, one of the biggest things that I found about fishing this time of the year is you are dealing with colder water temperatures and colder water is going to be kind of relative to where you're fishing in the country. If you live down in the south, you know, colder water might be mid to lower 60s, maybe a little bit colder. Where I live, I mean, our water will freeze over. So where I'm really using this is somewhere in the water temperatures between about 45 and about 60 degrees. That's kind of the sweet spot for me where I find that these crankbaits really produce really well. Now, the biggest thing that will help you to get more bites with crankbaits in the fall is the cadence of these baits. During the middle of summer, usually when I'm fishing a crankbait, like a deep diving crankbait, I'm gonna cast that thing out and I am ripping that thing as fast as I can go across the bottom. Now, when I'm fishing in that colder water temp that you're going to see in the fall, and this is the same thing I do actually in the spring as well, what I like to do is kind of a sweeping approach. So I'm gonna cast this bait out. I'm gonna crank it down to where it starts hitting the bottom because bottom contact is extremely important. It's gonna start hitting the bottom and then I'm gonna really kind of start sweeping the rod and I'm gonna reel up the slack, sweep the rod. That is how I work this bait. And I truly believe it can be the biggest difference in getting bit and not. Sure, if you're fishing around really active fish, you can probably reel that bait at any cadence, at any speed, and you're going to get bit. But I have seen days on the water in this colder water temps where that sweeping approach is going to get you a lot more bites. And what you will find is that when you go to sweep it and that bait pauses for a second, this bait is gonna float back just very slowly and that's where you're gonna get the bite. So cadence becomes very, very important, and I think sweeping the rod will help you to get a lot more bites. Now with crankbaits, I am primarily looking at rock cover. This is where I throw this thing the, mo the most, whether that's a rock bank of some sort, whether it's little pea gravel banks or points, maybe it's chunk rock or even uh, down a riprap bank. Those are the type of areas where I'm going to use a crankbait a lot. Now, if you get to the body of water that you're fishing and there's a lot of wood cover, that's where I'm going to bring up bait number two, and that is absolutely 100% a spinner bait. The fall time to me has been probably the best spinner bait fishing that I've experienced over the last several years. I fish it a lot in the spring as well, but during the fall when those fish are really keyed up on bait fish like gizzard shad and threadfin shad, man, there are days on the water where you will catch some giant limits or just giant bass in general 
on a spinnerbait. And the best thing about a spinnerbait is it's extremely weedless. I mean, you can fish this thing anywhere. And especially, like I said, when I'm targeting wood cover. And this is something that I do, I actually did kind of a full video about this, but I really like to look for off color water with a lot of wood. If I can find that and you can find bait fish in the area, I'm picking up a spinnerbait nine times out of 10 because I know it's gonna get me that quality bite. Another thing that's really great about the spinnerbait is this is a power fishing technique. I mean, I'm using 20 pound straight fluorocarbon with this. I use a seven foot medium heavy power rod, usually a 7.1 to one gear ratio reel. And I'm just constantly hitting this bait off that wood, popping that rod, letting those blades flare. And a lot of times that is when you get your bite. Now, when it comes to the bait itself, there's a number of really good spinner baits out there on the market. I mean, I love War Eagle. Uh, I love the Booyah spinner baits. One that I've kind of grown fond of over the last year really is the Berkley spinner bait. And the biggest reason is that the hook kind of sits further back away from the head than most spinner baits. So I feel like your hookup ratio is really good with this bait. Now around where I live, early November is really kind of the end of fall and late November really starts to be kind of getting into winter time fishing that may be the same where you are. And these next two baits really apply when that water gets to be really cold. When that water tip really starts below, falling below that 55, 50 degree mark, these are the baits I'm going to pick up. The first one being a jerk bait. A jerk bait is obviously known for being a cold water bait. And as a lot of you guys know, when it comes to fishing a jerk bait, is it's all about cadence. And in cold water, you really wanna fish this bait very slowly. And one of the big misconceptions that I feel like I have heard out there before is that you have to fish this bait really, really slow, right? Like pausing like 20 or 30 seconds between kind of popping a jerk bait. And I'm not gonna say that that doesn't work. It absolutely doesn't work. But for the guy that's like me and literally cannot do that, like physically I can't cast the bait out, jerk it twice and count to 30. Like that is way too long to me. So I'm just gonna miss that fish altogether. What I found a lot of times with jerk baits, even in really, really cold water, is I get a lot of bites in kind of the, five to 10 second range. So for me, I'm not usually pausing this bait longer than about 10 seconds. And something that's also really big is not aggressively popping the rod. When you go to actually pop your jerk bait in the summer, when I'm fishing for smallmouth and the water's hot, I mean, I'm poo poo, I'm ripping this thing, poo poo. But in the winter, it's just twitches. It's just small little twitches. That bait, you just kind of want to Twitch forward and then just sit there. Now, one of the baits, again, that I've grown fond of, and guys, I'm not a Berkeley like sponsored angler. And I've, I noticed now that I've actually mentioned a couple Berkeley baits when I'm talking here, but the Berkeley Stunna has probably become my number one jerk bait. I absolutely love a Mega Bass 110, but that bait is $25. It is expensive. A great alternative, especially for those that are a little bit price conscious, is a Berkeley Stunna. I think this bait is somewhere around the $12 range, $13 range. And the thing about this jerk bait is it was designed by Hank Cherry to slowly fall, okay? And it's very slow. So if you cast this bait out in the water, it's going to slowly sink down. It's going to slowly fall. And I think that that is a huge key into getting more bites with a jerk bait in cold water. So a lot of times I cast this bait out, I'm cranking it down. I'm going to pop, pop kind of, again, those smaller pops, pop, pop, let that thing sit for about 10 seconds. I'm not going to count to 10 and then pop it again. Okay. Pop, pop. And that's Typically how I work this bait, I've caught fish in ponds with this bait, with this technique, a lot of lakes, you can do it in rivers. To me, there's really no like bad or good area to fish a jerk bait. I mean, I fished it around lay downs, around rock, around logs, around grass. I fished it a little bit of everywhere. The big thing that you do want though when fishing a jerk bait is just a little bit of water clarity. It doesn't need to be crystal clear. It doesn't need to be six, seven, eight foot of visibility, but having 
three foot, two foot, three foot, at least a visibility will help you to get a lot more bites on this bait. It's a great bait. It's one that you should definitely pick up. Now, I have talked a lot about moving baits, crank baits, spinner baits, jerk baits. These are all baits that you're kind of moving fairly fast. Now, there's one bait and there's one specific bait that I throw a lot this time of the year, and that is a Strike King Bitsy Bug Jig. This is a very small, very inexpensive, almost a lower quality jig, if I'm being 100% honest with you, but the thing just gets a lot of bites. It's a finesse jig. So there's a lot of different finesse jigs out there on the market, but again, I'm, I'm not always a guy that loves to spend a ton of money on product as well. And this is a fairly inexpensive jig that you can find just about anywhere. And that Bitsy Bug to me, I like it in a quarter ounce size. That's what I use a lot. And I'm going to use a small chunk tra trailer with that Bitsy Bug, a very small chunk trailer. Usually the Zoom Super Chunk Juniors are the one that I fish. There's not a lot of action in this bait. A lot of times I'm gonna cast it out and I'm gonna slowly drag it across the bottom. I have caught fish in really, really cold water with this technique, again, in both lakes and in ponds. It's a, it's a great bait. It's one that works. Even that water temperature is like really cold, like in the 40s, which there's not a lot of guys who are going to be out there fishing when the water is 42, 43, but that Bitsy Bug will still get bit in that really, really cold water. Now, a very specific area that I have had a lot of success with that jig is fishing creek channel swing banks or like bluff style banks. If you find a bank, maybe it's in a creek itself, a lot of times towards the mouth of a creek, you're gonna have some of these creek channel swings. Those areas, to me, have always been the best areas on the lakes that I fish to catch fish with the Bitsy Bug. I'm gonna cast this bait up into a foot of water and I'm gonna work it down that really steep bank. Sometimes you're gonna encounter rock, some different wood structure. And a thing about fishing it this way is that you will find days where the bass are actually really high. There, there might be in that first foot or two, and then there's days where those bass are positioned lower on that deep break. So once you kind of figure out the strike zone that that fish are sitting, then you can really concentrate on it and clean up with that Bitsy Bug jig. Now the fifth lure is one of my absolute favorites. It's kind of old school, like not as many people fish it all the time, but it is a phenomenal bait for no matter what species, smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass that you are fishing for. And that is a blade bait. A blade bait is going to work in the coldest water temperatures that you find throughout the year. I mean, just after the ice, just before the ice, a blade bait works extremely well. Well, and I did a full video where I actually caught a lot of fish with the blade bait and kind of explained how to use it. I'm going to leave it linked right here. So if you guys want to learn more about the blade bait, go ahead, hit that video, and I'll see you guys over there.